for our final band for this evening. From Orange County, California, is a Christian hard rock band. Started by lead singer and guitarist Mark Benefield. Yeah. At New Wine Church of Florida, back in 1996. They play in all venues, from churches to clubs to outreaches, anywhere where the word of God is needed, which is everywhere, through music. They play at Whiskey and Go-Go, Pastor Whiskey and Prison. Their music has been played on an internet-based radio station in the UK. Ladies and gentlemen, Chill Faith! Well, well, well. Oh, I'm hey, I'm hey. We're going to do a real quick level check and get things started. So let me ask you something, are you guys in the mood to rock and roll tonight? It's good because that's what we came here to do, amen. I was really getting into what Lance was saying about the church being a hospital. You know, a good friend of mine shared with me one time, you know, when you walk up to church and you see that guy standing by the front door smoking his last cigarette before he goes in, you know, don't be too quick to judge that guy. Because that, guy might, that guy might be fresh out of prison. He might be 10 days clean. That's right. He's standing in front of the only place where yeah. he thinks somebody might be able to help him. Yeah. Right? And that's what the church is, is a place where people can come for help. Not just Christian people, but anybody that needs help of any kind, amen. started here. Um, let's try this one more time.
well, well, well. You know, Pastor Lance didn't give a lot of his testimony, but you're going to hear all about mine and some of ours tonight because I'm proud to say that our God is in the restoration business. There is no there is no life that he cannot restore. There is no mix-up that God can't fix up, amen. And I'm standing here. I'm living proof, and I can tell you I was the most tore up from the floor up. I needed a checkup from the neck up. I was whacked up, jacked up, backed up, and cracked up. I was so messed up that I couldn't stand up. But God had another plan for my life, amen. And he's got another
sounds so good to us, but it really sounds good to the Lord because that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to rejoice. You know, the devil could be sitting in the front row right now, but you know what? As long as we're praising Jesus, he can't touch you, amen. That's right. You are under the In the blood of Jesus is what's called cover me in the blood.
and that's the only thing that can wash away your sins. That's and right. I know because I tried it with alcohol. I tried it with every kind of dope you can smoke, drink, or snort. And you know what? All it did was leave me empty, amen. All it did was leave me wanting. And it wasn't, you know, my, my, my flesh man was all full, but my spirit man was starving to death. Come on. <laughs> You know, the Bible says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, amen. Now that's a warrior, that's a warrior psalm, amen. And that scripture that Pastor Lance read, that's all about being a warrior for Jesus, amen? He wants us to go out. Now, he doesn't want us to get into a little fight for him. But what he does want us to do is fight for what's right and to fight for what's good and to defend the people that can't defend themselves, amen? This one's called Fear No
Everybody having a good time tonight? Yeah. Had a lot of good bands tonight. Ground Zero. Yeah. Amen. Let's make some noise for Ground Zero. Yeah. About three days in the grave. Robert G. and Greg yeah. and the guys. Amen. Yeah. And, and who else was here tonight? The Jeff Zone. Jeff Zone. Yeah, we played a lot of shows with Jeff Zone. Been a good night of rock and roll tonight. You yeah. guys are having fun, right? Yeah. Seal the thing! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. Since you said that, if anybody wants a CD, we have some CDs. We're asking for a $5 donation for our CDs. And most of the songs that you just heard are on that CD. We also have some t-shirts. Is anybody wearing a Shield of Faith t-shirt? Yes. Oh, there we go, they look like that. We have some t-shirts. We're asking for a uh, We're asking for a $15 donation for those. And uh, so if anybody would like a shirt, see me after and we'll, and we'll hook you up, amen. amen. So uh, without further ado, I'd like you to make a lot of noise on my right side for Clay Anderson on the bass. Yeah. And on my left, his name's Henry, but we like to call him Hank the Crank. Make a loud noise for Henry your favorite. I see a lot of familiar faces, you know, I, I'm starting to learn a lot of people's names. He's here, how are you doing, sister? Got, uh, Linda. Yeah, Linda, yeah, yeah. Right, let's, let's just go through it. Let me, tell me all your name. What's your name, brother? Uh, my name is Ben Chow. Okay, what's your name? All right, my name is Virgil. Virgil, how about you? Phil. Yeah. All right. Tina. Tina, yeah, Tina's come to a lot of our shows. What about you? Gene. All right, keep going. Mia. All right, back there. You're Robert's son, right? No. No, where are you? He's back here somewhere. He split. He left. All right, he was sitting where you're sitting. All right, what's your name, brother? Brandon. All right, and sister Matthew. Matthew. All right, and Suzette. Yeah. I forgot mine. I forgot. Linda. <laughs> and Greg. Gene back there, and who's that back there? Is that Casey back there? No, that's Brad back there. Brad. Casey's Brad. over there. Two CR and, people, what are their names? Yeah. What's their CR people's name? Tom and Pauline. Tom and Pauline. If you want to go to CR, check out Paul. And Tom and Pauline. Pauline. Yeah. yeah. CR. Yeah. Celebrate the cover. Yeah. And you know, you don't have to be a dopey to go to CR. Just a struggle. Any kind of struggle in your life, man, the Lord will open the door there at CR. God works. God works. And you know the cool thing about the Lord is, is he, he'll come right where you're at. He will come when you're down at your lowest. He's right there just right waiting there. for you to reach out. He's waiting for you to say, okay, Lord. I'm gonna give it up right now. I'm, I'm scooting over out of the driver's seat. I'm gonna let you drive. Yeah. And you'd be surprised how much better of a driver he is. Yeah. I don't think you listen because I know most of you guys in here know the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. 
This next song we're going to do for you comes out of the book of Isaiah. You can never remember the scripture, the, the number of the verse, and that's really bad that you should remember that stuff, but I struggle in that area, so you can keep me in prayer. But it's, it says, Do not gloat over me, my enemy, for though I have fallen, I will rise again. For though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. This was called Into the Light. All right.
know, God has been so good to me. I was sharing with my brother Lance several years back, and I shared some of my testimony at a show we were doing with them. I think Rock House was there playing, and, and Brother Lance was watching our set, and I shared about a son, my son Joel, who had been addicted to heroin for 10 years. He was struggling, he was down. Every now and then he would call me, and he would be crying, and he would be messed up, and he would tell me, you know, Dad, if I can't quit this, I know I'm gonna die. And I said, well, you know, son, all I can do for you right now is pray for you. That's all I can do. And I pray with them. And that I continued to pray for him. So I shared that, and, and after we finished our set, my brother Lance came up and he hugged me, and he, and he just held me real tight and said, we're gonna pray for your son right now. Amen. And we did. And you know, I'm a firm believer in the power of prayer. Yes, yes. Yes. And I'm here to testify tonight that my son Joel has been clean of that addiction for the past three years. Amen. Yes. My past is, was just as just as dark as that. Yeah, I, needed to, I needed to eat some spinach like Popeye, but I, I wouldn't eat it. I would probably would have smoked it back then. But I, I was pretty messed up, you know. I wasn't always a good Christian that you see standing before you right now, you know. And, and I know, I know, there's some people in this room that can relate to what I'm saying. Amen. Come on now, come on now. I went to Bible college. I went to Orange County Bible College. Amen. I went to San Bernardino County Bible College. Amen. So you lay in there, in there on your bunk, and you got all that time to think. You start thinking about when your mom used to drag you to church, and you miss that, and you are hungry for it, and you long for that feeling, and you long for that happiness, and you recognize what you need. Now, I didn't always get right when I came out, obviously. Most of the time, not all about it. But the Lord, the Lord didn't forget about me, amen. And every time I called on him, he answered. He didn't always give me the answer that I wanted. You know, like when I would pray for that big bag of dope. He, he didn't answer that one the way I wanted him to. But he was always, he always got to be and, and I'm here to testify that he could turn your gory stories into glory stories. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and when you fall down, he'll be there to pick you up. He will be there to lift you up, to dust you off, to love on you. This one's called falling down.
Do we have time for a couple more songs? Please! Do we? Yes, we're sir. running over. Yes. One more? We're yes, running sir. over. Three more. Yeah. <laughs> we still Three got more. We've got a couple hours worth of music, but we're, we're only going to do two more songs. And you know it's been a real privilege and a, pre a pleasure to be here at Vermont Baptist Church. It's one of my favorite places to play, amen. One of the best places to play right here. I'm so grateful for these three guys. I, you know, I keep lifting these three guys up in, in three days in the grave. All of the people here tonight, we love all you guys, but we've got kind of a special relationship with these guys. They've helped us out a lot. They, they, uh, they introduced us to a radio station, an internet radio station way across the Atlantic Ocean. And it's called the Spectrum Countdown. It was on SpectrumRadioPetswood.com. And they would, you could send them their music and they'd play it. And it was a country station. But Robert said, yeah, they're playing one of our songs, man. It's a country station. We're like, we're like their resident rockers and stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, dude. You know, they hook us up, you know. So we did. And we sent them one of our songs. And the song went all the way to number one on the station, amen. <laughs> These two brothers, they helped us out, yeah. you know? And we love you guys. We love you too, man. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you so much. You know, they drove a long way to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. A long way. So this one, this one, you know, the book of Ephesians says that, that we fight not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and forces of the darkness, amen? So when things are going wrong in your life, you might be doing everything right, but the devil wants to try to trip you up, man. He's going to lay snares out in front of you. He's going to try to get in your head and mess with your attitude and make you think that people are against you. And you know what? <laughs> It doesn't matter who is against you. God is for you, amen. You, you got it going on. Come on. This one's called Armies of the Dark. Went all the way to number one. And uh, we got Gene and Robert and Greg to thank for it, amen.
I, I, I don't know about you guys. Who's getting up early going to church tomorrow? Mom? Oh, well, we better go see more hands. Man, come on. Wow, that's, that's me and Pastor Lance, we're the only ones going to church tomorrow? <laughs>
Okay. If you guys can see around a few minutes, um, we're going to give a little interview, and then we're going to bring up Pastor Lance, and he's going to close it out with prayer. If you guys can take time, because we want to end this all together if we can, all right? So Mark's going to come over here with me for a minute. Sure, sure. And whoever else wants to come on over. Am I in trouble? I'm not in trouble, am I? Come over for a little bit. Okay, uh, have you been called over to the principal's office before, brother? Is this something like you? Um, yeah, I mean, too many times, actually. Yeah, the last time. Yeah. Were you, were you uh, the class clown? Or you get fired? What, what happened back then in the day? Okay, I'm trying to think of it. That's up, man. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, it was always some kind of trouble to get into when I was younger. It was, that was, it was nothing too serious. Things didn't start getting serious until I started experimenting with drugs. And then, you know, it was just one problem right after the other, you know, and it just it took over my life from about the time I was 16 years old until I was, uh, oh, I don't know, about 45 years old. You know, I was a real quick learner. It took me, you know, 40 years, 35 years to figure it out, but thank God, you, you know, know. The Bible talks about the devil, that the devil comes out as an angel of light, right? And, and, and drugs, I mean, my goodness, it seemed like, like they're so good in some ways, right? I mean, but they screwed up. Well, you know, sin always, it always starts out harmless, you know, most of the time. It always is an appealing thing until, you, until it starts tearing up your life and you can't turn it around. And that's how the devil works, you know. He likes to sneak in under the crack in the door. And the next thing you know, it's, once it gets in your house, you can't get it out. The, the problem is, you say, well, I do whatever I want with my life, but the problem is you're affecting somebody else. It might be your, your children, it might be your, your wife, your, your you know, friends, or your, your mom. I mean, people are affected. You say, well, if you know it's my life, well, yeah, but it's, it's spilling over. Exactly right. You know, and especially... Especially when it's your kids or, or when it's happening to you and, and the people around you are suffering. They're, they're, you're, not, you're, you're not being held accountable for what you're doing because you're justifying your behavior by, well, it's my life and I'll do what I want because you don't recognize how, how much you're hurting the people around you. Now, um, would you say that all the members of your band have some kind of a path with, with addiction? Oh, yeah. Yes, we do. And for you personally, what was your turning point? Was it going to a program, or was it an account with God, or a, a combination? Well, I'll make this, this a long story short, but the turning point in my life was when I had lost, we had lost custody of all of our children except for one. And one of our kids, uh, the, the parent that got custody, was one of the biggest drug dealers in, in Southern California, and he still managed to be able to get custody of one of my children from my wife and I. So we had one child left, and we were a blended family, so it was a hers, mine, and ours situation with the kids. And the only reason nobody was coming after our smallest child is because it was the one that was between her and I. And um, what turned me around was uh, one day my wife came home. She walked by this church, and she walked in, and she came home, and, and she had this glow around her. She looked like Moses coming down from Mount Sinai or something. And she said, you know, I walked into this church and she said, these people uh, loved on me and they're just like me. And, you know, I grew up in the church. So I, that didn't surprise me. She said, you know, you won't believe this. And I said, you know what, I can believe it. I believe that. And I, I drifted back to that time when I was a young Christian and my mom would take me to church and I was a young teenager. And I realized that that was the best time of my life, and that's what I needed to get back to. So that was the beginning of a very long U turn. Wow. Well, but God is using you now in a mighty way. Because whoever's listening right now and is stuck right now in the middle of it, if there's somebody listening to you right now in the middle of what you were in, what would you tell them? I would tell them to not to lose hope that hope is, you need to hold on to that last glimmer of hope because there's always hope. And, and I would tell them, if you haven't tried the Lord, give him a try, give, give God a try because the devil will always take you back. And you know what? 
if you have tried the Lord and it didn't work, try it again. It's kind of like quitting smoking cigarettes. You know, sometimes it doesn't stick the first time. You got to keep trying. You got to keep working at it. And if you're in recovery, like uh, to celebrate recovery, and if they're involved in AA, they tell you, you know, if you want the program to work, you got to work the program. So uh, that would be my advice: is to just Amen. never give up hope. You know, the Bible promises us that God will never leave us or forsake us. So if you're walking and, and apart from God, guess who left? It was you. It was me. It was not him. But he's always, always waiting. Just like the prodigal son, you know, this is a story of a young man who took his, uh, arrogantly took his father's inheritance when wasted it on substances and women. And he was deeply embarrassed about his behavior. He said, well, I, I long to come back to what I had before. Like you said, you remember being in Sunday school when you were a kid, and he said, well, no, that was actually, I used to scorn that, but now I think that was the best time of my life. He tried to come back to his dad, and he says, he's not gonna take me back, but I'm gonna try and re rehearse what he's gonna say to him. Yeah, I'm not worthy to be your son. And his father saw him from afar, ran to him, and kissed him, you know, and um, threw a big party for him, and he, you know, truly cried, you know, and then said, my son was lost, but now he's found, he was dead, but now he's alive. And so if you are running from the father, he's just waiting for you to say, don't be saying, oh, he's so ashamed, he'll never take me back. Why do you think he sent Jesus Christ to the earth to die on the cross? Because he wants you back so badly that he was willing to pay the ultimate price to have you back. So yes, God wants you back. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He's waiting with open arms, longing for you to turn around and run back to him. So um, would you be willing to lead us in a prayer, especially the person that's listening right now that doesn't know God, is not in a relationship. They might have known him at one time, but they walked away. Would you like to lead that person in a, in a prayer? Yes, that would, that would be my privilege. You know, if you're sitting out there right now watching, or if you're in this room right now, and, and maybe you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, maybe you just, you know that there's got to be something better. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is something better. And all you have to do it's so simple. It starts with a simple prayer. We call it the sinner's prayer. And all you have to do is just from your heart say it to me. And so we're going to pray right now. If, this, if, if you're listening and, and you feel like this is your time, well, this is your time. So let's just, uh, just close your eyes and repeat after me. Dear Lord, I come to you a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask you to touch my life to take over my life, to guide me and direct me, Lord. Lord, I thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for me. And I believe, Lord, that he is your son, and I believe in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I just ask you now again, Lord, to take over my life, guide me, lead me, direct me, help me to get into your word. Help me to find a church and some Christian brothers and sisters to hang out with. Lord, I need you. And I ask you, take over my life. That's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As you prayed that prayer, what you did is you walked into the door that Jesus has opened for you. But don't just stay at the edge of the door. Run forth into all that God has for you inside of his kingdom. Don't, don't stay on the edge, one foot in, one foot out, and say, well, I'll figure it out. You know, just kind of jump in and jump out like jump hot, in, hot, hot games. Jump in, lock the door, and run, run forth into yeah. God's plan for your life. Amen? Amen. Well, thank you so much, brother. God thank bless you, you and, and the whole group. You guys were awesome. Henry and Clay and Mike. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.